as the pastor search committee, we were asked to comment on some of the things that we did together and kind of what our journey looked like. So as we became a family, and we have very much bonded as a family over our journey, uh, we committed to prayer as our primary initiative. I think the mapping of the journey was really in the role of the Holy Spirit. We feel like He's led, God, and directed every day on our committee work. We certainly have different giftedness in our committee, which I think you'll see come out as each of our members speak to you. But the one thing commonality-wise was that we all love Jesus that we all are passionate about the Word, and that we love our church. We love First Baptist Church. Each of us considers this a holy journey, and each of us has sharpened our commitment to studying the Word, to prayer, and to listening to our church. And I think I want to communicate primarily to each of you how much our journey has been sharpened and strengthened by your commitment in prayer to this committee as well. One of the primary things we did at the onset was we spoke with Dr. Uh, Dowell Loftus from the BGCT, and he came and started us on our journey and helped us understand better what our role is as the pastor search committee. From there, we broke down into subcommittees, and we tried to form subcommittees based upon our giftedness. So some people were in charge of resumes, some people were in charge of the church profile, the pastor profile, and you can see how the journey processed from there. So a lot of work was done at home during family time when they studied those resumes or they were trying to put together a church profile. So many hours outside of committee meetings were spent on that. And then from there, we invited people to submit their resume to our committee. And so we put our ad in the Baptist Standard, and we also advertised with the BGCT, and we held that time open until the end of May. Uh, We looked at every single resume that came in and decided if it fit the pastor profile, and then we went from there. We may have invited them to continue in the journey with us based on those findings. And we're going to tell you in more detail as we go along what that looked like in the subcommittees and as we processed in our journey. But certainly, I think some of the things that you would want to know as the church is that every time we met, we started with prayer. And we had a devotional every time we met. And um, every day, we bathed this committee and this church in prayer. It was never far from our minds, and I would think you would want to know that. Um, I also think that towards the end of our journey, as we become looking more towards our pastor, we have really fine-tuned to focus on a few things, and one of those is that Jesus Christ be number one in the mind of this pastor, that the Word of God be a treasure in his heart, that he be a man who is a true shepherd, someone who wants to journey together with us, and someone who wants to nurture us as a church as well as our church staff. Now I'm going to ask some questions of our committee members so you can better get to know them. Melissa, can you tell us how many resumes the committee received and kind of what that journey was like? I sure can. Myself and other committee members uh, reviewed 47 resumes over this time. Some of those were submitted uh, to us by church members, other people um, from the BGCT, pastors, and then we also received resumes um, via email and mail. Uh, We then took each one and looked at them and compared them to what we were requesting and what we wanted from the pastor profile, uh, and then determined whether or not they would take on that next step, which would be an application process. As we reviewed uh, resumes, we not just did not just look at the resumes, but uh, we went through their information. We went to their church websites, uh, reviewed information about their their church family, about their staff, who they were, um, and we also um, started listening to sermons. So a lot went into uh, that process before we even moved them along to the application process. We had um, 11 interviews that we conducted um, with those we felt that needed to move forward. Uh, We spent over 18 hours of interviews, um, spending that time getting to know these pastors um, better and determining whether or not they needed to move forward and were the best fit for our church. Tim. Yes, sir. How many sermons did you watch? A lot, Sean. Like, I don't want to put a number on it for just me, but think like dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens. At one point, there was like a two-week stretch where I watched so many sermons, I was starting to glow. We didn't just watch the sermons. Uh, We all committed to watching entire services for several of the candidates uh, as the field narrowed. 
uh, just to get a feel for the, the pastor's participation in the order of worship and, and what they were comfortable with and, and trying to gauge how their membership interacted and responded to the sermons. Uh, that was important to us to see. The vast majority of sermons were great preachers preaching God's word, so they were great. True to the curve, there were some candidates there towards the end that emerged as being consistently faithful to the word. They were easy to follow. Uh, their congregation was really engaged, and we felt uh, we all felt uh, that, that that our church could grow under the the kind of preaching that we were hearing from these candidates. All right, Andrew. How did your committee compose the church history, and how did that relate to you and the authenticity of the tour? The committee put together a church profile for the purpose of describing our church to potential pastoral candidates, a written document that included who we are, what we're involved in, some of our history, um, just basic schedule and things like that. But uh, some of the main themes that we really wanted to hammer home in that church profile was, uh, one, that our conviction is to teach the truth of God's Word, both from the pulpit and from uh, Sunday morning, Sunday school. And then the second would be that our heart is for missions, um, that we want to sh show the love of God, uh, the love of Jesus to those locally and those abroad. Um, as we brought in candidates for interviews, we gave a tour of the church and as we did this tour, we brought this church profile to life. And it was really cool to bring stories from our past, stories from our present of how God has worked um, through our church and, and through our lives. And one aspect of it that the, the start of our church began with six pioneer women in 1891 requesting to use the unfinished county jail. Um, and then how our campus is today that's just a really neat to see how we started, where we are today, and what God is doing continually. And that gave us excitement as a committee to see that God is really working. He has worked, and he is continuing to work. And the candidates also just really enjoyed it to see what God is doing here. And it reminds me of Hebrews 11 and 12, thinking about those that came before us, that by faith, they were laying a foundation for us and our faith today. And if we choose to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we are then laying that foundation for those in the next generation. Sean, can you tell us the purpose of the pastor profile and how did it relate to the candidates that you interviewed? So we spent several, several weeks uh, with much prayer, consideration, and discussion uh, creating a pastor profile that not only had high standards, uh, but uh, was also attainable. Uh, I remember at one point over, speaking over a rough draft, uh, we kind of joked with each other that I guess we're looking for Jesus Christ himself to come be the pastor of our next church. And we were like, maybe we shouldn't be so have such high expectations. But ultimately what we wanted is we just want the best man that God has for us to come and serve um, at our church. So our pastor profile is basically broken down into two, two sections. It's uh, uh, education and experience, and then also just qualities and characteristics of their personality, how they serve as a, as a pastor, how they preach, how they lead, just who they are as, a, as an individual. And so um, under the education and experience uh, portion, uh, we had some minimum uh, requirements that, that we were looking for, but we also had some preferred requirements. And I was actually kind of shocked to uh, see how many candidates actually met the preferred portion of our uh, experience and education. So I knew, I knew right away that God was, he was bringing some of the best that was out there uh, to, our, to our table for us to look at. As far as the qualities and traits and characteristics of their personality and their leadership style, we really relied heavily on scripture uh, for that, primarily the uh, characteristics of an overseer. So we referenced Acts chapter 20, uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. What we also did was we listened to the church. So all of us in this committee, since the, since the committee was formed, have had several discussions with the members of our church and we brought all those conversations to the table we discussed it we talked about it and uh what we what we came to found out was that what everybody really wanted was what scripture said and we just kind of found a common theme 
that uh, what people were really looking for uh, in the next pastor of our church. So we took all of that and uh, we, we came, came up with our uh, pastor profile that we really felt was uh, brought to us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and through scripture. And it's something that we're, we're really proud of. And, uh, and it just helped us to stay focused on, uh, as we looked at a candidate, we just compared it to the pastor profile. And we're, if it checked the boxes, we were like, yes, this is somebody who, who we're looking at and who we're looking for. And so um, we just know that it, it helped to keep us on track and guide us to, to finding the next uh, pastor of First Baptist Church Lubbock. What has the journey with this team been like in terms of what you see as giftedness and unity of the team? Church family, this journey has been unbelievable. If you remember back in February, you elected a committee ranging from generations fivefold, from ages of 37 to 77. And I'm amazed at these men and women from different backgrounds, with different personalities, different spiritual gifts and talents, and how God has used us, ordinary people, to accomplish His extraordinary purposes, and how the Spirit, Holy Spirit has united us as one team in search of God's will and the man He wants to be First Baptist Church pastor. Church family, we are so fortunate to have you. You've gifted us with emails with phone calls, with text messages, even stopping us in the hallways to tell us you prayed for us. And as you prayed for us, you became part of this process. 1 Corinthians 1.10 tells us we are to live in harmony without distinction, without division, but we'd rather we would, should live with one mind, united in thought and purpose. So thank you for the privilege you've given me as a member of this team. We, we've come close together, and we look forward to the end of this journey. Can you tell me some of the memorable statements made by some of the candidates during their interviews? One of the, one of the things that was pretty universal across most of our candidates is when asked about their prayer life, um, many of them stated that when they struggled, they would go back to the Lord's Prayer. And I thought that that was really unique, that several several pastors across several different churches and just different different up you know upbringing uh, all kind of had the same answer is that the lord's prayer was their their rock when they struggled some other things that i thought were also very unique was um, that stood out to me trust is the glue that creates unity um, scripture is perfect reliable and authoritative generosity does not come from pride but from, from humility. You have to be real. People know when you're not authentic. And when asked about, one of our candidates, when asked about his call to ministry, he said, I never had a backup plan. And these are just a few things that really stood out to me um, across several different pastors that they are truly committed to their job um, and being the shepherd of, of their congregations now, and one of them, the con uh, shepherd of our congregation eventually. All right, Brad, as the deacon chair, can you tell us how you feel about the future of First Baptist Church Lubbock based on your personal experience sitting on the PSC? Well, you know, I couldn't be more excited, and um, I've kind of been made fun of the last couple of weeks because I said that, on the stage and they said I didn't look very excited. So I guess this is my excited face, um, but I really couldn't be more excited. You know, one of the things that I've really thought about the last few days um, is uh, something Dr. Hardage said in a sermon a couple of weeks ago and, and he was talking about praying like you mean it. And when I think about what this committee has done, that's what I think has happened. They have gone about this process like they meant it. And nobody could be more invested in this process than, than what this group has been because their families are at stake. Um, our, our church is at stake. The, the community is at stake. And we've all felt the weight of what we're trying to do here, and that is trying to bring... 
God's shepherd for this church so that um, we can continue to be a light in the community and a light to the campus. And as we've gone through this interim period, it, it, it really seems like we're starting to build, um, let me call it momentum in the Lord, as, as he is preparing a foundation for this next shepherd to come. Um, and as we move through this process, I'm getting more and more confidence that um, that man is out there and that he is he is also hearing um, from the Lord and he's saying get prepared uh, because um, you've got a place in Lubbock to serve and you're going to see great things in the future. You know, there's it, it has been quite a time commitment. I don't begrudge what we've we've had to do, but it definitely has taken a lot of time and and I see it as again holy time that um, that the Lord has asked me to do honestly um, it's been a great honor to, to serve and, and do this and and certainly my wife and and uh, family have been very supportive you know we had to commit uh, to be steady and stay the process and and that's what we've done it's been a lot. It's taken a lot of time to review uh, resumes and applications, sermons, um, spending time in prayer, spending time away from family. Um, I've had the opportunity to pray specifically with my children about this. Um, my oldest, when I've had to miss something or um, I'm home late and not telling him goodnight or whatever, he's like, well, I'm part of the reason why you're there because I voted for you to be on that committee. And I love that because it's his buy-in um, to what I'm doing. Um, to come home and not be able to talk about uh, what we've been doing and been gone from the house with my husband has been hard, but he's been gracious and understanding. And this committee has been amazing to be able to pick up the phone and, and talk to about it. Um, it's been an honor and a blessing to be able to serve on this committee. I'm thankful for the men and women on this committee that are my family um, and that have walked alongside me in this process. I actually took a pencil to it and I said, if everybody put in about 15 hours a week and they assure me they put in at least 15 hours a week, then we have over 2,000 man hours during our time on the committee. But um, it's been a joyful journey. I can say the Holy Spirit's been with us the whole way. Uh, we had some real decisive moments where we knew that the Holy Spirit told us to turn a different direction. So those kind of times reinforce your relationship with the Lord and they reinforce your purpose. So our time was a joy. That's my perspective on it. Now, my husband, he might tell you a little different. He said he's been missing out of, on a few home-cooked meals, and he wished that he'd been on the meal train through our Sunday school class. Uh, we've had some funny moments. We've been driving in the car when I got a phone call from a pastor, and he'd have to pull over, and I'd have to get out of the car. Or at one time, we were in a hotel, and I had to step out on the balcony. So we've had some fun moments, but the time commitment has been great, but the reward has been greater. It's definitely like having a complete other job. It's been a lot, but it's been it's it's been worthy a worthy process. Um, it's been something. It's been very fulfilling, and at the same time, um, you have a lot of angst because you don't want to make a mistake. My wife has spent many nights by herself reading, but she loves to read. But she understands the the vitality of this committee and the urgency and the purpose for what we're doing. And it, she would much rather have a pastor in our pulpit and be at home reading a book than not. Yeah, it, it affected my family. We had a lot, of, a lot of time of the kids staying out of the bedroom so I could listen to sermons. Um, and one night in particular that I'm thinking of, my son had a baseball game and we had a meeting and it was important. And even he said, Dad, finding a pastor is way more important than a baseball game. And so it affected them, but they got it too. As the months have gone on, um, my family, at times I could tell that my kids were ready for this process to be over with. Um, but at the same time, they were very supportive and they were uh, excited about this process uh, in our church and that uh, I was able to be a part of it. But at the same time, it's a, it's a lot of time that, uh, that we've put into this, but it's also been 
very rewarding, both personally, uh, spiritually, and for my family as well. Everything comes and goes in seasons, and, and there was a season where uh, we were going through a lot of resumes and trying to narrow the field in the middle of the process where uh, we were, we were kind of under pressure uh, to, to listen to sermons, and uh, I remember weeks where I spent 15 to 20 hours just listening to sermons during a week, uh, getting ready for live interviews. I know uh, one week I, I did 30 hours of interview prep, watching uh, recorded interviews and, and additional sermons. It's a lot of time, but my family's been very supportive. Uh, they've been engaged in the process, asking me constantly to reveal confidential information, which of course I did not. But uh, it's really brought us together and given us something to, to, to unite in prayer around in addition to just living normal life. Well, hello. That's not really the truth. I just, can we scratch that? <laughs> That's not really what I meant to say. What do y'all think? I think y'all should sing a song. Y'all, yeah, that would be... Blessed assurance! Oh, 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 oh. Can we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Great, there it is. <laughs> Tim. Yes? How many sermons did you watch? A lot, Sean. Can we start off? <laughs> 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 Melissa, can you tell us... Just no. kidding. Stop. I cannot tell you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you can't put a Chick-fil-A commercial on this side. Yeah, eat more chicken. He just did a three second exchange. I know, it's nice. Brad, can you tell us your favorite donut shop and why? Have you ever spent months on end with a six foot seven cop? <laughs> We've all become sermon junkies. Can you put that in there? Oh, <laughs>